today I continued living on the edge. I arrived in Dublin without any kind of reservations. And the big problem with today was I arrived at about 5.30, 6 o'clock. So I catch a bus from the ferry terminal and 10 minutes into the journey we're sitting in traffic. And I abandoned the bus, as did many of my co-backpackers, and we headed for the youth hostel, which of course was full. Thankfully, I asked and I recommended another place down the street. They said, oh, I'll just go ahead and walk down there. Well, I had just walked about 20 or 30 minutes hauling all my gear, and I begged and pleaded and, and pretty much wouldn't leave until they called. They called, they booked me the room with my credit card, and they advised me to make sure I show up, and here I am, sitting in my room for four people. So it'll be interesting to see who else shows up. So not too long after turning off the camera, a roommate walks in. Hey, you want to go on our literary pub crawl? Sure, why not? Spur of the moment stuff, carpe diem. So, off we went. <laughs> that always gets the first laugh. Oh, that's that's you. It would be. It is. Well, look at that face. If you must. The face that sank a thousand pints. Yes. <laughs> and launched a million hangovers and couldn't cure any of them. We were here yesterday. No, 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 there you're mistaken. What did we do yesterday? What did we do yesterday? Yes. Oh, nothing is certain when you're about. In my opinion, we came here. Oh, you recognize the place. I didn't say that. Well. That makes no difference. After all, that tree. Mm. That bog. You're sure it was this evening? What? That we were to wait. He said Saturday. Hmm? I think. You think? I must have made a note of it. We were treated to some locally written prose. And then, to continue our cultural enrichment, a traditional Irish song of the alcohol-consuming variety. It's very simple. When I sing, what will you have, you sing back, I'll have a pint. Mm. Okay. Since you arrived in Ireland, you're probably saying very little else. There's not much else to do, really, is there? Mm. Says my L1 to your L1, will you go to the Waxies Dargle? Says your L1 to my L1, sure I haven't got to far then. I went down to Monto Town to see young Kit McArdle. But he wouldn't lend me half a crown to go to the Waxies Dargle. What'll you have? Uh, I'll have a pint with you, sir. And if one of you doesn't order soon, we'll be thrown out of the boozer. After our little sing-song, it was off to Trinity College to learn of one of its more well-known and distinguished alumni. Because the students were much better known for their drinking and debauchery in the streets and the taverns than they were for their religious education. And by the time that Oscar Wilde arrived here in 1872, things hadn't changed much for the better. <laughs> and they haven't really changed much since Oscar's time either, I can tell you. But <laughs> Oscar had very little time for his fellow students. And he once wrote of them, they think of nothing but running and jumping. And they vary these intellectual pursuits with bouts of drinking and fighting. And their souls, if indeed they have souls, they divert with coarse amours among the barmaids and the women of the street. They are, in fact, simply awful. Even if one doesn't drink, you can grab some water at the bar and get to know some of the people on the tour and a few of the oldest establishments in Dublin. And this is a literary tour, so there is that cultural enrichment aspect to it all. You'll experience the work of some of Ireland's greatest writers in some of the places that inspired them. Towards the end of the tour, this may be how you see the world if you'd been sampling some of the local brews. Ah, my kind of people. Camera friendly instead of camera shy. Well, I must admit, it was a great little tour. Some history, theater, and a nice overview of Dublin, all packed into a few hours. I took the scenic route home, saw some new sights, and felt the need to sample some of the local cuisine. Fortunately, I stumbled upon one of the most famous eating establishments this side of the North Pole. Hello, Paul. Welcome to Dublin, all the way from Florida. Yeah, yeah Leo Burdick's home of the fish and chips. We're the most make fish and most fish, famous fish and chips in the world here. And standing beside me here is my colleague here, Gary. Okay, so what could I give you, Paul? Uh, fish and chips. Fish and chips. I give you the most popular fish we have, Gary. Give Paul the most fi famous fish and chips we have. Give him a fresh cotton chip there. Okay. Here. And that lady wants a smoke as well. Okay. 
when you come to Dublin, right, there's about 10 different places you must you must visit, right? And out of the 10 places, we are one of them, because we're established here since 1913, and we're the most famous fishing ships in the world. Not in Dublin, but in the world, right, okay? We're very famous people coming from all over the world. Film stars, rock stars, you name them. You know, and government people and all came in here and sampled our wonderful fishing ships. So we are listed, as I said, as one of the 10. Um, Guinness's Brewery up the road, for you get your Guinness is another. The Book of Kells down at Trinity College, that's another. And there's about five or six others, a few museums and what have you. But I said, we're in the top three of the places you must visit, you know what I mean, when you come to Dublin. All over the world, people come to say, what is good about Leo Borges? Leo Borges is good because what we do is we give away two things, right? Two things are quality and quantity, right? As I said, you know, a lot of people come in here, you can see how busy we are here now. It's a traditional, tonight is Friday night, and Wednesday night, Friday night, at two traditional fish and chips in Dublin. What is the quality difference with your fish and chips? There's a fresh fish, caught this morning, battered today, and sold tonight. You can't get more than that, you know? And it's a good size as well, you know? But people say, what do you do when you're for your spare time? I do go out fishing. <laughs> it's a bit stupid, you know? It's a bit unusual. I've always went home and I'd say to my wife, what have you got for the, for the dinner? For, for, for the dinner? And she'd say, I killed your fish and chips. And I'd say, what? I've been working it all day long. I know, but I do it different, she says. I caught him about two years ago in Drummore Lake. I was fishing off Drummore Lake and I had a rod out. I just, you know, just going to go fly fishing and what have you. And I decided to go with the big guy and caught him. He's a 23 pound pike. But I've served a lot of famous people in the time coming in here, you know. I just rattled off a few, just a few. Uh, Sandra Bullock was in about four months ago. And um, we had all the boys from U2. They, well, they come in regularly, you know. They come in, they say to me, you know, they shake my hands, say, you're real famous, you're real famous. And I'm looking at them saying, these guys are worth 100 million pounds. They're a member of the biggest band in the world. And he's telling me, I'm famous, you know. It's pretty good. But, you know, through the years we had some great people in. B.B. King came in, it was a great start with him. He came in with two bodyguards. He queued up for about 10 minutes, got the fish and chips. He went out to the limousine. 65 foot limousine was out at the door. Who's your, who's your most favourite famous person that came here? Um, of all the people we had, my favourite person would have to be Sandra Bullock. She was very, very nice. She's absolutely beautiful. You know, through the years I've had lots of different people come in here, and I've seen the different types of fame, you know. I've seen my people of fame come in, think they are different to everyone else, but they're just like everybody else, they're human beings. Some of them get a bit snobby and a bit kinky with the air, but she, I thought, was down to earth. She shook my hand, even got a kiss and all that. Did you get happy. a phone number? I didn't, unfortunately, no. Uh, she was dating, I think, I think it was Matthew McConaughey she was dating at the time, so I didn't really want to get into it, you know. A few other celebrities, we had Tom Cruise in. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping for Pamela Anderson to come in one day, or Cindy Crawford. Or Cindy, Pamela, if you're out there, make sure you come in to me. We get the best fish and chips in the world here. <laughs> When famous people come in all over the world, whether from music, films, whatever, when you come in, we put our name here on the thing called the Hall of Fame, and as you see, it, that's done about two years ago, so there's still a good few famous people on it. You know? And when you go, Paul, we're going to stick your name on it. Well, here I am sitting in front of Christ Church Cathedral, right behind me, and right in front of me is the world famous fish and chips, which I'm about to sample. There's the chips. Pretty good. And let me get a hunk of fish here. There's a hunk of fish. Looks good. Look, still steaming. Oh, yeah. Oh. Pardon me eating in front of it. It's the whole purpose of this exercise. That is fresh fish. And if it's good enough for Sandra Bullock, it's good enough for me. Whatever that means. Oh, yeah. Perfect way to end a kind of messed up day. You know, messed up relatively speaking. Mm. Bet you wish you were here right now, don't you? <laughs>